How do you engage um, in your craft of writing in a time that is so difficult, so desperate right now? How do you clear your head? What is your ritual? Isabella Allende, uh, who wrote the introduction to uh, the latest edition of Open Veins of Latin America, she uh, has talked about she begins on one date in, in a year, uh, in January, if she ever begins a book. How do you do it? No, I, I have no discipline at all. <laughs> I, I, I learned to write really from a music, um, a Cuban musician. He played drum, tambor, in Santiago de Cuba a lot of years ago. He was an absolutely magic. This drum was wonderful, playing, play, playing m music on earth but uh, directly from heaven it was so marvelous that i asked him please give me your secret and he said yo toco cuando me pica la mano now you should help me because i cannot say it in I english i play when my when my hand begins to itch <laughs> that's it and i write when my hands when my hand begins to itch I mean, I, I, I never give myself orders saying, now you must write, or you must write about this subject, or you must say this or that, or no. I, I leave it, let it be, I leave it as something growing inside. And it's a hard work, eh? each, each, or each, each, each one of these short stories I love to write have some of them 20, 30, 40 versions before being published. It, can, it's very hard for me. Can you read one last one for us? Yes. In the summer of 1972, Carlos Lenkersdorf heard these words for the first time. He had been invited to an, an assembly of Tzetzal Indians in the town of Bachajon, and he did not understand a thing. He was unfamil unfamiliar with the language, and to him the heated discussion sounded like, like some sort of um, crazy rain. The word tick came through the downpour. Everyone said it, repeated it, tick. Tick, tick, and its pitter patter rose above the torrent of voices. It was an assembly in the key of tick. Carlos had been around a lot, and he knew that in all languages, I is the word used most often. I. But tick. The word that shines at the heart of the sayings and doings of these Mayan communities means we. I'd like to ask you in terms of your, you, you have a chance now and you're going to be going around the United States to get, get a message to the American people. Uh, we, this is the most powerful nation in the world. We're probably the most the largest empire the world has ever seen. Uh, what is the role of the American people in the world today, and what should be the role? To as, di as distinct from the government. Yes, I hope they they may hear other voices. And um, um, it would help to to understand that. Uh, the, the world is much more than, than, than the U.S. I mean, this is a very important country indeed, and I come from, from a small country. Most of people doesn't even know what it is. But we are all important. We are all able to say something that deserves to be heard. And uh, when, I, when I was living here, I, I, in, in a period I had been here you know, three, four months teaching us at some universities or so on, I was surprised by the fact that the, the, the world didn't exist or, or, or for the media, for the big media. It didn't, it didn't exist. It, almost no news about the world. And when the news came, 
most of people did, didn't know what, what, what was it about. Five seconds. One of my, of my masters, Ambrose Beers, one century ago, said, wars are not so bad, at least for, for the U.S. For us, wars are not so bad. Wars teach us geography. Eduardo Galeano, I want to thank you very much for being with us. One of the great writers in the world today, his latest book, Voices of Time, A Life in Stories. Our website is democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalo. Bye.